Hallelujah. <laughs> this is the night the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen, because we have a choice, and we're going to choice to rejoice. <laughs> Glory to God. Are you blessed? Uh, oh, so many people just don't get it, man. You know, in this, in this time that we're in, in the times that we're always in, the time that we're going in, and positioning is everything. Spiritually position is everything. You know, in the, in the scripture where Paul said, you know, in other words, position me to where it's no longer I did live, but you did live. That's everything. Positioning is everything. Everything works in position. When there's position, there is divineness. There's divine character. There's an area of divine. In other words, there's favor. There's divine favor. There's divine sight. There's divine hearing. There's a heart that has changed when we stay in that position. And in, in this position, there, there's a place. There's a flow. There's a flow in that position. And, and so many times, listen, it's just like a car that's not tuned up. It runs rough. Amen. Amen. Amen? And when there's a roughness, when we're running rough, it means we're, we're out of position. And, and there's a place where there's the, um, it's called the flow of simplicity. The flow of simplicity. And in this flow of simplicity, it is a relationship while we're walking with the Lord that nothing really matters. And, and, and I want to explain it in an, in an, an arena to where, do you ever see the, uh, uh, those like big canoes where you have like 14 guys on there or women or whatever, and they're all, <laughs> you know, they're all stroking, right? And they're all rowing at the same time. And, and every one of them is into a rhythm. And there is a spiritual rhythm where everyone flows, and that's how it's walking. That's walking in the spirit. That's being in position. Now, no matter what's coming against that boat, no matter whether there might be turbulence, there might be all kinds of certain circumstances, but the rhythm doesn't stop. It continues to move because movement is life. As long as it's in the spirit. Amen? And that's a rhythm that is in the spirit realm. And that's where there's a flow of simplicity called rhythm. Would you turn to Galatians chapter 5? Oh, glory. One of the things the enemy always wants to try and do is not only get us off course, but get us out of rhythm. Then you, we run rough. Galatians 5, 16, would you read it with me? I say them what? Walk, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Again, walking in the spirit is the flow. <laughs> Again, even when turbulence and circumstances or trials come, there is a rhythm that must be kept like that rowing. Amen? So, if that rhythm is established by being positioned and walking in the spirit, then it's interrupted by walking in the flesh. Things come rough. And it says this, it says, verse 17, For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary to one another, so that you don't do the things that you wish, or by what you're being influenced by. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now, the works of the flesh, in other words, these are fruits of the flesh. These are works of the flesh, but they're also allowing you to know that you're out of rhythm. Which is what? Evident. Which are what? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath. Selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, uh, drugs, all of the other stuff, rebellions, 
Um, and anything like it, of which I tell you before, and just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Let me tell you, there is a rhythm and a flow that brings you into the kingdom. And it says this, but the fruit of the Spirit is what? Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, control over self. Against such there is no law. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh. Now those who are in the anointing, the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty, those who are in the Spirit, filled with the Spirit, their flesh is crucified because those, those who are led by the Spirit have crucified the flesh. Amen. And there is a flow, and it's a flow of simplicity, and it's simple. But so many times we begin to ignore the roughness. We begin to ignore that we're not running on all cylinders. Amen? Amen. That's when we need an oil change, man. Amen. Praise God. And it says, and those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passion and desires. In other words, we are no longer allowing the enemy to influence our flesh to dictate decisions. If we live in the Spirit, let us also what? Walk in the Spirit. And let us not become conceited. Why? Because that's going to cause a rough run. It's going to take you out of rhythm. And to become conceited is prideful. Provoking one another, envying one another. Those things he's saying will get you out of rhythm. So it's important that we understand that in this rhythm that you and I must maintain a momentum of peace, joy, and righteousness. Which is a fruit of walking into this rhythm. When there's roughness, man, you're rough. We're rough. Do you ever get to somebody and say, you're rough? Rough, rough. Amen? The flesh is... Now, let me share with you about this flesh, because when we're out of rhythm, the, the flesh is, you're in rhythm with the flesh, and the flesh is rough. Now, the rhythm of the flesh is called forced rhythm. It's called what? Forced rhythm. The flesh is a forced rhythm, and its structure is to run us to death. Everybody got it? The world is under a forced rhythm. They want everything right now. We must take control and pause and slow things down to examine whether we're in position, whether we're walking in faith, or whether we're in rhythm. Remember, the world lives under forced rhythm. Everybody has to stay busy. Romans 8. That's the first thing people come to you when they're in the flesh. Everybody says, what have you been doing? Oh, I've been busy. Okay, doing what? <laughs> Going to work. That's nice. Everybody thinks that if you're busy, you're doing something. You can be busy watching TV. Be busy what th moving your thumbs. You can be busy serving the devil. Hallelujah. <laughs> That's forced labor or forced rhythm. Does everybody get it? Romans 8 and verse 1. Is everybody there? It's amazing because when I haven't seen someone in a long time and I, I say, man, how you doing? He goes, oh, I'm busy. And I said, how you doing? So people think that they're doing good because they're busy. You could be busy going to hell. In verse 1, what does it say? Romans 8, verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus or in the Spirit who do not walk according to the what? Right. Flesh, but according to the 
spirit. So those who are walking according to the spirit are in rhythm. But those who are walking according to the flesh are forced rhythm. Even if you're a Christian, you could be under forced rhythm. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. So understand that in the area of forced rhythm, you are under the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, that and it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, on account of sin he condemned sin in his flesh. That the righteous requirement, everybody say righteous requirement. Remember, we talked about if there is not a fruit of righteousness, then you, you're, not even, you're not in the spirit. Amen. That the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. So in other words, you are going to overcome force rhythm by walking in the spirit because you're going to be in harmony. You're going to be in the rhythm where it is a flow of simplicity. Is everybody okay? It says, for those who live according to the flesh set their what? Minds in the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the spirit, the things of the spirit. And to be carnally minded is what? Death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Well, you're going to know whether you're in rhythm or not. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can it be. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Amen? They cannot please God. So the flow of simplicity is a rhythm by walking in the Spirit. Even the Word says, can two walk unless they what? Agree. See, whatever you're going to agree with is what you're going to walk with. Because as a man thinks, so he is. As a man thinks what? So he is. Amen. Second Corinthians 11. Out of rhythm, there are so many clues of being out of rhythm. When you're looking for something else to fulfill you, you are out of rhythm. If you think getting married, getting a job, getting this, getting that is going to put you in rhythm, you're out of rhythm. Does everybody understand that? The only way that you stay in rhythm is with relationship. Without relationship, you can't maintain rhythm. Because without relationship, you can't have it. You can't be walking in the Spirit. If the Lord isn't before you in everything you do, then you know you're not walking in the Spirit. You know you're not walking in relationship. If you're making decisions according to other people's decisions, according to what the world says, according to what everything else says, you are out of rhythm. And then we become rough. Amen? And it ain't rough and ready. It's rough and lost. 2 Corinthians 11, is everybody there? I'm going to start at verse 1. Oh, that you would bear with me a little folly, for indeed you do bear with me, for I am what? Jealous for you with godly jealousy, for I have betrothed you to one husband that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But I fear lest somehow as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, so your minds may be corrupted from what? The simplicity that is in Christ. And he talks about that your minds will be corrupted. Amen? Of the simplicity. There's an area of simplicity. The only way that can be simple is to realize that you are in the spirit. You're in rhythm. Things move. It's a flow of simplicity. Even though there's turbulence, even though there's trials, you don't stop. You continue to flow. Does everybody get it? Because you are led. You are not pushed. If you are pushed, if so many times people are trying to make something happen, then you're out of rhythm. Does everybody got it? People trying to make something happen. And of course, many people are going to use, well, God told me. Well, if God told you to make something happen, then it should be flow. It's not rough. Nobody gets hurt. Does everybody get it? Nobody's offended. There's flow. And not only that, there should be a fruit of righteousness 
established by this with peace and joy. Those three fruits. Oh, hallelujah. In this simplicity of Christ, in this flow of simplicity, a rhythm is maintained by establishing priorities. Everyone say priorities. Because what will move you out of position is exchanging priorities. Your first priority, of course, is your relationship with the Lord. Second priority is his will. And third priority is his house. And many people neglect his house. That's why things fall apart. They don't work around the house of God. They work around their personal priorities. Does everybody get it? Again, your relationship with the Lord, his will, and his house. In Psalm 37. Praise you, Lord. You know, the word says it's good for us to gather together. There's a special anointing, isn't there? Amen. Psalm 37, verse 22. I think. And yeah, we'll start at 21. It says, the wicked borrows and does not repay, but the righteous shows mercy and gives. For those blessed by him shall inherit the earth. But those cursed by him shall be cut off. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And he delights in his ways. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. For the Lord upholds him with his hand. See, even when you're in position and you're in rhythm, you may make a mistake. Making a mistake doesn't mean you're out of rhythm. Does everybody get that? Making a mistake doesn't mean you're out of rhythm. Because when you're making a mistake, you get right back in. Does everybody, in other words, you may, you may get out of a little bit of rhythm while you're, whoa, and then you come right back in. So the flow never stops. But when you're out of, completely out of rhythm, you find yourself going in circles. You know, it takes one oar <laughs> to be pulled out of the water. And you know what happens? You go into a circle. So we see that these steps that are ordered by the Lord, why are they ordered by the Lord? Because the person's in relationship. He's maintained, he's ma he's maintained his priorities, relationship and pleasing God, his will and his house. Do you know that how much God adores his house people take it for granted he adores your personal house but the gathering of the house in psalm 140 psalm 140 in verse 1 and let's read this together please Deliver me, O Lord, from evil men. Preserve me from violent men who plan evil things in their hearts. They continue to gather together for war. They sharpen their tongues like a serpent. The poison of ass is under their lips. Keep me, O Lord, from the hands of the wicked. Preserve me from violent men who have purposed to make my steps stumble. Why? To get you off of rhythm. The proud have hidden a snare for me and cords. They have spread a net by the wayside. They have set traps for me. I said to the Lord, you are my God. Hear the voice of my supplications, O Lord. O God, the Lord, the strength of my salvation. You have covered my head in the day of battle. Do not grant, O Lord, the desires of the wicked. Do not further his wicked scheme, lest they be exalted. In other words, they purpose to make our steps 
stumble. They want to influence us in any way whatsoever to get us out of rhythm. And it can be done only, I'm telling you, the temptations are the area of restructuring priorities. When restructuring priorities fall into place, there is out of rhythm, always. Psalm 119. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together. Look upon me and be merciful to me as your custom is toward those who love your name. Direct my steps by your word and let no iniquity have dominion over me. Redeem me from the oppression of man that I may keep your precepts. Make your face shine upon your servant and teach me your statutes. Rivers of water run down from my eyes because men did not keep your law. Wow. Again, in this we see the arena of trying to get us out of position. What was he crying for? Direct my steps. Keep me in position. Keep me in the spirit. Keep me. Even David said some things. He said, cause me. Cause me. Let them slap me if they have to. Amen. Amen. In Proverbs, uh, let's go to uh, Psalm 40. Anything out of God's time is not God's will. Amen. And it always, it always sets a different rhythm. Oh, yes. Starting at verse 1. What does it say? I waited patiently. That word patiently means endured. I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined to me and heard my cry. He also brought me up out of the horrible pit, out of the murray clay, and set my feet upon a rock, and established my what? He established my steps. So many times, we don't allow him to establish our steps. He has put a new song in my mouth, praise to our God. Many will see it in fear and will trust in the Lord. Verse 4. Blessed is that man who makes the Lord his trust and does not respect the proud, nor such as turn aside to lies. One of the things is, you know, we got to come to a place where we are trusting in God. It says that he will establish our steps. But, you know, when there is mistrust, let me share that trust is like glue to a relationship. You know, it's, it's like glue to, a, it's like uh, what you call mortar to a relationship. When there's mistrust, that, that, that's broke. That's broke. And then it has to be earned. Amen. But there will always be an area of doubt until it is earned. And it's not earned overnight. It has to be worked out now. And so it's the same thing with those who trust in the Lord. How, you know, I mean, there's a lot of people that say they trust in the Lord, but then they establish their own steps. And what it does is it breaches the relationship with the Lord. Why? Because even though we say we trust him, but don't do things to trust him, it breaches that relationship. Because if you can't trust him, he can't trust you. And now we're re-earning that trust again. Why? Because we're trying to get back into that rhythm. Into the spirit. Proverbs 3. Is everybody okay? Yeah. Flow of simplicity. You know, we, we try to make it so hard. Any little thing, first thing you hear the voice say, you're struggling. <laughs> or, you're bad. Don't let anybody manipulate you Amen. with empty, persuasive words when you know that it's not God. Never. 
then we become men pleasers instead of God pleasers. In Proverbs 3 and verse 1, would you read it with me? My son, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my what? My commands. For length of days and long life and peace they will add to you. Well, if there's peace, are you in position? Is there a rhythm? Are you in the spirit? Are you gaining favor? Hallelujah. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. And so find what? Favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. Okay, are you ready? Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your paths or your steps. Amen? He will direct. It's acknowledging him though. That's where relationship is. Acknowledgement in everything that we do. Always ask, what do you think? What do you think about this? Let me share something with you. No is prevention. Everyone say no, no. is prevention. When God says no, it's prevention. It's not because you're doing anything bad. He's preventing something from coming. He's preventing something. He's protecting no means prevention. So when things are going on in your life, if you didn't hear no, but the door shut, don't try to open it. Don't try to make something happen. He says it will happen if you meet him there, if it's him. If you got to make something happen, it ain't God. Does everybody understand that? And things just get worse. They don't get better. Oh, hallelujah. Direct my past steps. Keep me in rhythm. Hebrews 12. The price. Cooperation. Well, I don't feel like it. Listen, then there is no relationship. If we allow feelings to dictate our decisions, there ain't no relationship. It just doesn't feel right. What would God say? Well, I don't know. Well, when you don't know, what do you do? Nothing. You wait. Hebrew 12, verse 5. Let's read it. And you have forgotten the exhortation which speaks to you as to sons and daughters. My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor be discouraged when you are rebuked by him. That means no. For whom the Lord loves, he chastens and scourges every son whom he receives. If you endure chastening, correction, and, and don't get offended and run, Amen. God deals with you as his children. For what son is there whom a father does not chasten or correct or read? Why? Because correction is what? Redirection. Correction will always bring redirection. Why? Because one of the things that causes problems is flawed belief systems. Amen? Which brings flawed perceptions. Verse 8, but if you are without chastening, of which all have become partakers, then you are illegitimate and not sons. Furthermore, we have had hus uh, human fathers who corrected us, and we paid them respect. Shall we not much more readily be in subjection to the father of spirits and what? And live. 
For they indeed for a few days chasten us as seemed best to them, but he for our profit, that we may be partakers of his holiness. Now no chastening seems to be joyful for the present, but painful. Nevertheless, afterward it yields the what? Peaceable fruit of what? Righteousness to those who have been trained by it. So it's a part of your training and my training. You and I will be corrected. We will be chastened. We will be rebuked. It's a holy spanking, which brings a holy shift. Amen. <laughs> Again, chasten is associated with redirect. He is saying, wrong way. No. And if you ignore it, you know what? You end up in the bushes. You'd be dragged just through the bushes with prickers and things that are painful. Things are not in rhythm. They just will not flow. No matter what you do, it ain't going to work. 1 Corinthians 11. If there's no flow, there's no overflow either. 1 Corinthians 11 and verse 31. Hallelujah. Flow of simplicity. Are we there? Let's speak it. For if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. <laughs> there it is. Everybody can go home now. <laughs> <laughs> we just need to hold on to that scripture <laughs> till we go home. If we would judge ourselves, we won't be judged. Hello? But when we are judged, we are chastened by the Lord that we may be that we may not be condemned with the what? World, because the world is out of rhythm. Amen? They're under forced rhythm. And there will be condemnation with that. But those who are in the rhythm with God, there is no condemnation. Amen? <laughs> Psalm 23. The path is narrow and difficult. But even though it's narrow and difficult, doesn't mean you don't, you don't stay in rhythm. Do you ever see anyone kayaking? Man, those waves are... But they get into a rhythm. Even with skiing, you're going down the slope, man, you get into a rhythm. You get out of the rhythm, as. My wife will tell you that. I never saw somebody go so fast on skis in my life. <laughs> There was smoke behind her. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Praise God. She took those skis off and walked down the rest of the hill. She never got on them again. Obviously, it moved her out of rhythm. <laughs> Hallelujah. Psalm 23. The Lord is my what? Shepherd. Shepherd. I shall not want or lack. Look at this. He makes me to what? Lie down in green pastures and leads me beside the still waters. Wow. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will what? Fear no and I won't be influenced. For you are with me. There's relationship. We are glued together. Your rod and your staff, they shall comfort me. In other words, I'm willing to receive counsel, correction, direction, and a kick in the butt ski. Verse 5. It says, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. 
It's my responsibility to get to that table. You anoint my head with over with oil and my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord. Ah, he's keeping divine priorities, isn't he? Everything is in priority. When they're out of order, we're out of order, we're out of rhythm. Still waters lead you away from self. He's always leading me and you away from self that lives in a forced rhythm. Amen? You know, again, the people of the world don't know it. They don't, they're, they're anxious. They're in want. And things are never enough. They're materialistic and arrogant. That's forced rhythm. 1 Corinthians 13. Is everybody getting this? Remember, we are being challenged constantly now in every area. Let's speak it together. Love never what? Love never what? Love never. Is love a choice or a feeling? It's a choice. Yeah. Love never fails, but whether there are prophecies they will fail whether there are tongues they will cease whether there is knowledge it will vanish away when when Jesus comes because <laughs> you won't need him anymore <laughs> it's amazing how they turn the scripture around and try to tell you that the gifts of the spirit have been, been done away with verse 9 for we know in part and we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part will be done away with. When I was a child, I what? spoke as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. In other words, things putting myself first. Getting, when a child is always putting himself first, things are out of order. There's no priority there. Priority is only me, myself, and I. But when there's a priority, it's you and God. His will in his house. In verse 12. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I am known. And now abide in faith, hope, love, these three. But the greatest of these is love. Love. Child, a child always goes, why, why, why? When God says, no, you don't have to go, why, why, why? Why, 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 why? It's just no. It's no of what? No of prevention. Amen? It's no. And he doesn't have to explain himself. It's no. And many times when you're walking with the Lord and, and you don't hear no, whatever, like I said, something just shuts. It's not opening. It means no. Then just continue. Amen? Yeah. Colossians 3. And we're going to close here. It's going to be one of my shortest teachings. Glory. Glory. Don't panic. Colossians chapter 3. Is everybody there? Amen. Glory to God. <laughs> I can't even find it. There we go. In verse 5. Therefore what? Come on. Therefore what? Put to death. I love that. In other words, kill it. Therefore, put to death yourself, or your members, which are on the earth. What is it? Fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, 
covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience, in which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. But now you yourselves are to put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another since you have put off the old man that's out of rhythm with his deeds and then put on a new man who's in rhythm and is renewed in the knowledge according to the image of him who created him. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on what? Tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. But above all these things put on love, which is the bond of perfection, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you are called in one body, and be what? Thank Thankful. Continue. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly with all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatever you do in word or deed, do also in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Vitally important. All right, one more scripture, James. Hmm. Verse 2. <laughs> My brethren, count it all joy because you're in rhythm. When you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces what? Patience. Endurance. <sighs> stroke. Stroke. But let patience have its perfect work. That you may be perfect and complete and what? Lacking. Lacking nothing. And if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives it to all liberally and without reproach. And it will be given to him. But if you're out of rhythm, you will have doubt. You won't trust. You won't believe and you won't receive. You will say, prove it. You will always wait for a sign instead of trust. Let him ask in faith with no doubt, and for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose he will receive anything from the Lord. He is double-minded and what? Unstable. Unstable in all his ways. Let the lowly brother glory in his exaltation, but in the rich, but the rich in his humiliation, because of a flower of the field, he will pass away. For no sooner has the sun risen with a burning heat than it withers the grass. It's Flowers fail, and its beautiful appearance perishes. So the rich man also will fade away in his pursuits because he is out of rhythm. He is relying on his prosperity. Verse 12, but blessed is the man who endures temptation. For when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who follow him, love him, and stay in rhythm. Amen? The flow of simplicity. It's simple. We have a choice. And that choice is maintain priority. Stay glued to him. Know his will. And love his house. Amen? Amen? Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. 
Let the seed that has been imparted in us in the flow of simplicity grow and bear fruit for your glory. And Lord, we thank you for when you say no and when you shut the door because it's prevention. So Lord, now bless your people. Keep us. Keep us hidden in the secret place. Keep us in rhythm. Keep us filled with your spirit. And let the joy of the Lord be our strength that we may be a sign and wonder and a trophy for your glory in Jesus' name. Nobody said amen? amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.